I mean, where Fiesta reigns couldn't fit more appropriately. Absolutely. Exactly. The fireworks is going to be starting here in just a minute. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget about the Flambeau Parade later on tonight. Take care. from case at 12 the news at five starts right now we begin this evening with an update to a tragic story from earlier this week the two-year-old child who was shot in a home when a gun fell off a piece of furniture has now died his name was romel antonio richardson and san antonio police say the child was struck in the head after the gun fell and went off this happened on thursday around three in the morning on kent store street near south ellison on the west side the boy's parents rushed him to the hospital and he was in critical condition at that time. Family members told police the gun was lying on top of a TV when the little boy knocked it down. It fell and fired. A three year old in the house was also home, but he was not hurt during that shooting. Police are still investigating the incident and at last check, no charges are filed against those parents. San Antonio police had to clean up a mess caused by a police chase that started in another county. The, this is the end result of that pursuit that ended around 140 this morning on Southeast Loop 410 in Zarzamora. It started in Medina County on South Loop 1604 and I-35. Medina County 
Uh, sheriff's deputies were chasing a car and a short time later they warned San Antonio police they had crashed that that, that, that car rather had crashed under a bridge on Loop 410. Medina County has not confirmed if they caught the driver or not. Police believe that vehicle may have been stolen. Now to, attend, now to another police chase, the Bear County Sheriff's Office was led on one themselves for a stolen vehicle. This happened at 2.03 a.m. near Alamo Downs Parkway. Deputies first came across the stolen car on Lone Star Parkway. They started a routine traffic stop, but then the car took off. Several units were already in the area and were able to quickly spike strip the car, but the driver did not stop. He continued driving with flat tires when they crashed into an open field. Two men jumped out of the car and began running. One deputy tried chasing one suspect, but rolled over into an embankment. The deputy was not injured, but that passenger was able to get away. No word yet on if that driver has been arrested. It took firefighters three hours to battle a house fire yesterday. When it was all over, that home was a total loss. It happened in the 100 block of East Woodland Avenue near McCullough in San Pedro. Authorities say the home was empty but boarded up, which made it a little difficult for firefighters to put the flames out. One person was said to be inside at the time of the fire, but they managed to escape. There were no injuries reported. It has been an absolutely gorgeous day and perfect day for hundreds of people to be out and about enjoying all the Fiesta events, including down in Southtown in the historic district, the King William Fair starting to wind down. Yeah, I was there earlier today. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And our Camelia Juarez is live there now at the King William District. Camelia, how is it out there? Tim, Courtney, like you said, it's absolutely beautiful. Everywhere I turn, there's food, there's music, there's art. It reminds me of First Friday, but a lot bigger. Take a look behind me. This is Art Alley. We're seeing lots of different, cl <laughs> different clothing, different jewelry, um, lots of sculptures. We, everybody's clearly enjoying a lot of food. There's there is about a lot of chicken on the stick. I see a lot of the Fiesta favorites. Everybody's eating everywhere they walk. There is 20 blocks of walking performances. Just a little while ago, we saw a mariachi band pass by. It was awesome. There are, there are also a lot of activities for kids, like a Hawaiian dance. We saw a martial arts performance. Now remember, the fair, remem the fair raises a lot of money for art, for um, for education and community improvements and the fair is set to end in about an hour so for now I'll send it back to you in the studio. Tim, Courtney? Always one of my favorite events down there. All right uh, other Fiesta events we're going to check in on the Fiesta bow in just a little bit. Yeah, but first we're going to get to some politics. Two groups for and against Prop A held rallies today in San Antonio, encouraging voters to cast their ballots for the May 6th election. Alyssa Cole spoke with both sides passionately defending opposing views. The fate of San Antonio's charter amendment known as Prop A rests in the hands of the voters. Civic leaders spent Saturday participating in rallies promoting information on Prop A's site and release provision. We spoke with executive director of Act for SA, Ananda Thomas, who is spearheading the Justice Charter Amendment. She says if Prop A passes, it would actually allow police to maintain discretion in making arrests. Absolutely, we want police to be able to have discretion, but it's guided discretion, right? If something that's citation eligible happens, they should be given a citation to appear to the reentry center. But Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez doesn't agree with the guided discretion approach. San Antonio is a beautiful, welcoming place. We can't just be giving out citations and warning people to, to not commit crimes. Uh, they have to be held accountable for the crimes they commit. Toma says if a police officer uses discretion to issue a citation to an eligible nonviolent person, it could give that person a second chance. So they pay restitution back for property damage, right? They give back to the community and get the services they need so that they don't feel so desperate to fall into crime and into theft, which, you know, poverty is the biggest precursor of crime and we're actively fighting that. I think San Antonio is a city that wants balance. We want to have fun, we want to enjoy, but we also want to be safe and we want to ensure that our police department has all the tools necessary to ensure that happens. The last day of early voting is Tuesday, May 2nd, Election day is Saturday, May 6th. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News.
happening around Texas. Tragedy unfolded when five people, including an eight year old child, were shot and killed by a gunman in Cleveland, Texas, just outside of Houston. Deputies were called to a residence about a harassment complaint. And while en route, multiple 911 calls came in of an active shooter at that location. When police arrived, they found several victims ranging in age from 8 to 40 years old. At the time, as the only survivor, the 8-year-old then later died at the hospital. Investigators believe the suspect is a 38-year-old by the name of Francisco Oropeza, who was a neighbor. He was intoxicated and began shooting an AR-15 rifle, apparently from his front porch when another neighbor asked him to be quiet. A gentleman stepped out of his house, uh, said, hey, we're trying to keep a, uh, uh, an infant um, to bed. And uh, he says it's his property. He'll do whatever he pleases on his property. The man went back in the house. Next thing they know, he's walking up the driveway with the rifle in hand. The sheriff says investigators have video of that suspect walking up to the house which uh, has identified them now as Oropesa, that man you see there. A manhunt is now underway for the suspect across Texas. A judge issued an arrest warrant for him and a assigned a $5 million bond. We'll be right back. A new study shows a connection between breast cancer and changes in breast density. Published in JAMA Oncology, the findings reveal that if the density of one breast is declining slower than the other, cancer is often detected. Scientists at Washington University conducted this research with more than 10,000 women over a 10-year period. While breast density is a known risk factor for cancer, the study says more research is needed on how breast density changes over time. It has been a fun several days. We are now at peak fiesta, I think, as <laughs> yeah. we are going to be having the Fiesta Flambeau Parade in just a few hours. We are so excited for that. It doesn't start until later tonight, but people are already pumped, and we know that they're already down there. One person who's down there are John Paul Barajas. How you do, JP, wow. look at that shirt and the dancing. You gotta warn us before we see something <laughs> like that. I need to put sunglasses on. Hey, I know, right? I gotta catch somebody's attention Ooh. out here with all the stars we got at the hottest party in the 210 at the country's largest illuminated parade. Doors just opened at the KSA Insiders Party minutes ago at five o'clock. This place is already packed. We have doubled, maybe even tripled last year's flambeau case at Insiders Party. I think we have 1,600 or nearly 1,600 tickets sold. As I mentioned, there's a lot of stars that I have to compete with. These are two of the biggest ones we got. <laughs> Steve, Stephanie. Hi, the energy out here is awesome. People are ready out here to party. Yes, it's a little hot, but you know, we've been watching the forecast, right? So oh, it's gonna be nice. Is, this is, compared to Flambeau's past, this is beautiful. Right. I love this, yeah. I, and, and yeah. It's like one big family environment out here. We got the DJ, we got John Paul dancing. I mean, what else can you ask for? Oh yeah. A cascaro. Cascaro. Yeah. I knew it was a bad idea. I saw I saw it in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out. We're having a great time out here. There's so much to do. We obviously have the drinks and food cover. Oh my. Oh, way too pretty. Oh. <laughs> oh, why, why would you not want to come down here and hang out with us? They're telling us we got to get back to the studio. I guess there's a newscast going on. We'll toss <laughs> it back to you guys, but come hang out and have some fun. Viva Fiesta. We'll be there soon. We don't have. Psychedelic Paisley is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Psychedelic Paisley. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll only be cascaroni free for a little bit. Of course, Casky had to get on that <laughs> yeah, action. Yeah, of course he did. No rain, but it is raining. Definitely raining confetti. confetti. <laughs> confetti. So on brand. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, they did mention that it was a little warm. We're in the 70s right now, but I think after the sun goes down, temperatures are actually going to cool off. We're going to see those cooling through the 60s through flambeau time. So it is going to be really nice out there. Low humidity. It has been a bit windy today. Those winds are going to calm as well. Now, as we head into our Sunday, a chilly start is expected, but still more sunshine and an even warmer afternoon. The humidity will return, though, as we head into the early portions of next week. That also could lead in some isolated storm chances. So we'll get you all those details coming up after the break.
getting a little tired of having to clean up all the leaves after the little hailstorms go through, but it's yeah. hard to complain because the rain has been wonderful and, and it's just so gorgeous out now. Yeah, we were watching your coverage. You did such a good job, yeah, Mia, but all job. of that, all of that severe weather has passed and we're back to partying. Exactly, <laughs> right? Thankfully, you know, the timing of the storms didn't affect Battle of okay. Flowers. I know it did affect Niosa for a little bit, but it was quick. It was in, it was out, and today has been absolutely beautiful with low humidity and plenty of sunshine. But one of the bigger themes of today that moved in behind that front that sparked that severe weather yesterday is the wind. Take a look at these wind gusts right now, still to the tune of about 25 to even 30 miles per hour, a little calmer than where we were earlier this morning. Those winds were gusting out of the north upwards of 35 to even 40 miles per hour. But generally, I think here over the next few hours, especially by and just after sunset, we will see those winds continue to subside and it will be a lot calmer out there for the Fiesta Flambeau. Now temperatures right now we're in the 70s here in San Antonio, 76 over at the airport, 74 in Bolverde, a little bit warmer the farther south and west that you go. Current temperature is 83 in Hondo, 82 in Divine and 80 over in Uvalde. Here in town we'll see those temperatures start to fall into the 60s by sunset as well. Clear skies are expected, so it will be a cooler evening to a cooler night here in San Antonio around 61 by 11 p.m. And again, those winds will continue to subside. Clear skies in place through the overnight hours when you combine that with the drier air and low humidity that we have in place. That's going to make for a chilly start to our Sunday. Check out these morning lows in the low 50s for most of us around 52 is that forecast low officially here in town. So you will want the long sleeve stepping out first thing tomorrow morning. But take a look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast. Nothing but sunshine is in store throughout the day, which means you're not going to need the long sleeves as we head into the afternoon hours because that low humidity also allows temperatures to warm up pretty efficiently into the afternoon. So it is going to be a bit warmer out there tomorrow than what we've seen out there this Saturday. Overall daytime high topping off in the mid to upper 80s, even closing in on that 90 degree mark in spots. So yes, warmer than what we've seen for the first half of the weekend's plans. Still holding on to that drier air tomorrow and for the most part into Monday as well. But as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, we're really going to start to see those south winds take over, pumping in more of that Gulf moisture. So Monday, it'll still be nice, a little warm. Temperatures topping off in the mid to upper 80s yet again. But by Tuesday, Tuesday, we'll start to see the cloud cover return, some areas of patchy fog possible in the morning. And then into Wednesday, we'll start to introduce some isolated storm chances back into the forecast as we see a couple of disturbances work through the Lone Star State. So we've got about a 30% potential Thursday and into Friday. Temperatures still into the mid to upper 80s for those daytime highs. Morning lows also climb because of that muggy moisture that moves back in. So until then, enjoy this evening. Absolutely beautiful. Tomorrow will be warm in the afternoon, but overall still very nice here in San Antonio. Mornings in the 50s and more rain chances. I I couldn't ask for more. The weather has played very nice this week. Yes, we appreciate it, it. All right, Andrew, NFL draft is finally wrapping up. That's right, and the Cowboys and Texans are kind of two sides of the same coin. The Cowboys stood pat with both of their draft picks. The Texans were reeling and dealing all week. When we come back, we'll break down all the moves that they made. Plus, Roadrunners baseball comes up with a huge rally in the late innings. Got that too next. Thirteen or fourteen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Man, who gives a <laughs> Really? Holy really? We got it. That. We got it. That was Jerry Jones on drafting Mozzie Smith in the first round of the draft on Thursday night. It doesn't matter where on the Cowboys draft board they are as long as they draft them in big board sports. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The 2023 NFL Draft wraps up this afternoon in Kansas City, and there was a lot of wheeling and dealing. Oddly, the Dallas Cowboys played things safe and stood pat, focusing on filling their needs. In the first round, Dallas selected Michigan defensive tackle Mozzie Smith, 26th overall. Mozzie arrived at the Star yesterday afternoon and was formally introduced via press conference. The Cowboys front office weren't the only ones thrilled with the pick. So was Micah Parsons, who literally jumped for joy at the idea that Smith can help the Dallas 
Dallas defense stop the vaunted NFC East rival Eagles quarterback sneak. The young guy's getting a lot of praise for his raw strength, but how would he describe his strength? The way I describe myself on the field when it comes to strength is when I put my hands on somebody, they go backwards. You know, um, it ain't it ain't often that that doesn't happen. Um, and somebody else described me, you know, they didn't describe me. They, they was talking about how fast I can move, even though I'm so big. Somebody, I forget who, I think it was Mike Morris or Mikey from uh, from school. He, they said it's like they took a big refrigerator and threw it down the hill fast as they could. I like, <laughs> so I like that one. That was a good one. <laughs> The Cowboys open day two of the draft by staying with the Wolverines and picking up tight end Luke Schoonmaker with the 58th overall pick, filling another desperate need after losing tight end Dalton Schultz to the Texans in free agency. Then they made Longhorns fans happy by selecting linebacker DeMarvion Overshone with a 90th overall pick in the third round. After a relatively uneventful first couple of days, how did Jerry Jones feel about his three-player draft class? They will play. They'll be actively playing. And uh, that seems trite to say that, but uh, uh, we've got players here that uh, uh, fit in with where we uh, need depth or where we need, in uh, some cases, we need to have them out there. Yet. I think that Mozzie Smith played played in uh, uh, average 60 plays a game. 40, 50 plays a game. 40, 50 plays a game. So I look at plays, to answer your question, I see a lot of plays out of these three picks. Here's a look at the Cowboys' final selections from this afternoon. They started by taking Viliama Fejoko Jr., a defensive end out of San Jose State. In the fifth round, they went to the O-line and took offensive tackle Asim Richards out of North Carolina. Then in the sixth round, the Cowboys traded up for the first time this year and snagged cornerback Eric Scott Jr. out of Southern Mississippi. They wrapped up the sixth round by taking running back Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State, a potential replacement for Ezekiel Elliott. Vaughn is also a, a son of a scout for the Cowboys, which means he he ended up drafting his own son in the process. The Cowboys are still waiting to make their final selection. While the Cowboys stood relatively firm, the Texans have been drafting all over the place, and there was no bigger shock than their day one move to get quarterback C.J. Stroud second overall and pass rusher Will Anderson Jr. third overall. Both were formally introduced to Houston on yesterday afternoon, and they're both excited to help change the culture for a team that's been at the bottom of the league for the last few seasons. We just want to keep our head down and work and be intentional with everything we do and swarm to the ball. You know what I'm saying? That's what this place is all about, swarming and being intentional. Start from the ground up. Uh, we, everything that we're going to get is, is not going to be just given. It's going uh, to be earned. So we want to put our head down, work, make sure that we grind and that we, we show dudes that man, we're willing to, to listen before we talk. We want to adjust, adapt to everything that we have to to become better teammates, better leaders. Houston continued trading on day two, moving back into the second round to select center Juice Scruggs out of Penn State, 62nd overall, and then drafting Houston Cougar wide receiver Tank Dell in the third round at 69th overall. Both players have really strong reputations, and general manager Nick Casario explained that character was an important factor in selecting these two. It's really emblematic of the type of people um, they want to have in this building. So when you put together who they are as men and whatever their skill level is on a football field, so you tie it all together, it's kind of how we want to build a program because in the end that's how you sustain something over long periods of time. So try to avoid the ebbs and flows and just try to keep it moving in the right direction. Houston was busy again today, taking TCU edge rusher Dylan Horton in the fourth round. In round five, they selected linebacker Henry Toto out of Alabama. Then in the sixth round, they took Jarrett Patterson, another center, this time out of Notre Dame, so that's two picks on the center position. They then moved back into the sixth round via a trade with the Bills to select wide receiver Xavier Hutchinson out of Iowa State. And they still have one more pick to make coming up in a matter of moments. Nationally ranked UTSA baseball was back in action this afternoon for game two of their road series against UAB. Roadrunners trailing five to three in the top of the ninth, down to their last two outs. Two on for Antonio Valdez, and he puts a charge deep into left. That is carrying, and it's gone. A three-run blast vaults UTSA back in front, six to five, and they hang on to win it six to five, improving to 32 and 11 on the season. The series finale is tomorrow at noon. Meanwhile, the missions have won three in a row. San Antonio knocked off the Naturals last night at Wolf Stadium in dramatic fashion, trailing 5-4 to four in the bottom of the 10th. Michael De La Cruz came through in the clutch with a two-RBI double to right center as the Missions walked off with a 6-5 to five victory of their own. They are back in action tonight at 7.05 p.m. All the local baseball teams starting to change things around here, guys.
tomorrow. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. All right, we're not quite done yet. We've got a full hour of news for you today. So that means we've got a whole nother half hour coming your way. We're going to visit a bunch of the Fiesta events that are happening this evening. We also have a sneak peek of our Texas Eats. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back for our special edition of KSAT Saturday Evening News, going a full hour. Tonight, a big portion of downtown San Antonio is going to be packed with people as the city celebrates the 75th Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade. Super exciting. One of my favorites. Just like all the other Fiesta events, the Flambeau Parade is about bright colors, music, and people, but with an added touch of flair, illumination. It's a sight to see that is pure San Antonio. Steve Spreister and Stephanie Jimenez will be giving viewers a play-by-play as the procession makes it through downtown and they are out there now looks like they're already visiting with some of our viewers at our KSAT insider event you guys Thank are you guys. ready Thank to you. go you got beautiful flowers behind you how's it going down there you know Tim this is such a great event and you know we're what three couple hours away from the parade even yes. beginning. We're here at the flower wall here at KSAT 12 and we have people that are coming and getting pictures. It's the insider event. Billy, can you span around and see just how many people we have here at the insider event just off Avenue E here downtown for the Flambeau. Everybody wave at Billy as he goes around there. I love this so much. It, the doors opened at five o'clock down here and we're expecting somewhere around 1,500 people to join us for this insider event. Listen, a lot of people and you see the sun is shining. It is a beautiful, beautiful day out here. So if you're home, I mean, trust me, this is definitely where you want to be today. But despite it being kind of hot, the sun being out, the line was pretty long. People out here are definitely ready to party. They are ready for the fun. They are ready for the food. They are ready for the drinks. Everyone's just in a super good mood out here. Absolutely. And you see Billy just walking around. They have food. We have water. We have tacos. We have all this other stuff. Hey, Billy, kind of come back this way because uh, we're going to get a picture taken with three of our newest friends here. They're from Colorado. From Colorado. From Colorado? Wow. All right. Come on over here. All right. Here. You guys want to come over here? Come over here right in the middle. All right. So our friends are here from Colorado. All of you get in here. All right, so we have the flower wall that's set up here, uh, which seems to be a crowd favorite so far. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed off to the side, David Sears is throwing confetti. So he's very good at it. He seems to be, he seems to be throwing it especially hard at me for some reason. So thank you guys for joining thank us. You. What's your name? Hunter. What's your name? Henry. Henry. What's your name? Isabella. Isabella. Love it, love it. Thank you guys for coming out. Have you guys been to Fiesta before? No. You've never, this is your first Fiesta? Yeah. yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff that goes by and it is lit up and everything. Have you guys done the cascaronis where you break on the people's head? Here, I want you to try it. Each get one. Each okay? get one. And you can crack it, you can crack it on my head, okay? Yeah, crack it on his head. On the count of three. Woo! One, two, three. All right. Oh, they're they're veterans. They're ready to go. So we're having a good time here downtown, waiting for the Flambeau to start the 75th Flambeau Parade. Stephanie and I will have the call coming up. And of course, our special starts at seven o'clock tonight. Until then, Tim, Courtney, back to you. I've got some cleaning up to do. Yeah, the kids from Colorado are definitely cascaroni ready. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. They were. Fiesta is, of course, the party with a purpose, and for some, that also includes a higher purpose. Fiesta San Fernando is happening right now. They have sausage wraps, ribs, and potatoes, just some of the items all the vendors out there are selling. Today marks the last day of this free family-friendly event, and it kicked off on Thursday. There's also live entertainment out there, and those working the booth say it is a labor of love for their church. The proceeds collected will benefit the parish at San Fernando Cathedral. Vendors are hoping the love of the church and Fiesta will draw as many people out as possible. Wonderful crowd, great music, great place to be, and it's free. Parking may not be, but San Fernando is. Fiesta San Fernando ends tonight, but vendors will be out in Main Plaza until 1 a.m. if you still need a little snack after the parade. So it could be a place to go for that.
You always need a snack after the parade, Tim, of course. Well, another Fiesta celebration is in full swing, being hosted by some of our country's finest veterans. VFW Post 76 is hosting the 10th Street River Festival. The party is on the grounds of the VFW Post that happens to be the oldest all-American post in the state of Texas. Organizers say they go all out to make sure visitors remember Post 76 and San Antonio in a positive way. It's about welcoming our, our, our visitors, our friends, our community, our uh, friends from out of town, and uh, just to have a really good time here, especially during this time of the year. The party at the VFW Post 76 goes until midnight tonight. And just around the corner from there, of course, is where the parade will be taking place. That is the biggest event at Fiesta. It really caps it off the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade. Our John Paul Barajas is out there, one of the many people covering it for yeah. us. And after we saw that shirt earlier, it's kind of like, where's Waldo? Yeah, it is. We can always find John Paul, but he's doing something very <laughs> special. Look, he's got the shoulder shot. shake still. Okay, what do you do? We're hearing it's something about face painting. Yeah, we'll get to the face painting in a second, but, you know, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, so they, if they need to find me, they say, hey, JP, we need a live shot. You, Where's you, the guy with the shirt? That's, that's, yeah, you, know, you will so, not be hard to find at all. Strategical. <laughs> strategical. <laughs> now to the good stuff, the face paint. Everybody's having a good time. We have a long line. Everybody's here. You got tons of different options over here. Oh, and the wind. That's a good thing. The wind is keeping everybody cool on this sunny, sunny day. Now let's work our way this way before we get to the face painting. Hey man, can we see this pup? Who is who is this? It's Jack. It's my uh, daughter's dog. Is it Jack? Yeah. So, uh, KSAT Insiders MVP. Jack, got anything you want to say to the people? <laughs> oh, I think he said life is not rough. Get it? <laughs> Get it? Rough? No? Okay, maybe not. Well, what's going on over here? So we got some face paint. I know you're getting all made up right now, but what uh, what do you decide on? What are you getting face paint? Uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. Spider Woman. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love the outfit. Everyone's having a so great much. time. Do you tell, talk to us a little bit about all the different options and uh, things you can do? Yeah, so we have face painting today. We have glitter tattoos. We have crowns. A little bit of everything to celebrate Fiesta here today. But there's a little bit that we also do. We also do canvas paint parties. So if you look at that over there, I'll have a little um, description of what I do. Awesome stuff. Do you think you could match this design on my shirt? Absolutely. And put it on my face? I sure can. <laughs> We're not going to actually make that happen, but, you know, it's good to know that she's talented enough to get anything you want done, face paint wise And then if we look this way, Billy, just give them a, a look at how packed this place is. Like I said earlier, this case at Insiders Party, I think, is the biggest to date. It is a packed house. Everybody's having a great time. The DJ is doing a phenomenal job. But we're going to toss it back to you guys for now. If you're not out here, you need to be. Come out and hang out, guys. All right, the party continues. We will have more on Fiesta, including uh, an event that honors creativity. And it's happening right now. We'll tell you where you can find some of the talented local artists when, and where you can find their art and buy it. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta gives back through the King William Fair, the fun-filled family festival held every last Saturday of Fiesta. Thousands take part every year in the day-long event, which offers arts and crafts vendors, live music and dancing, a kid's play area, and delicious food and drinks all around. But the King William Fair is a party with a purpose. Proceeds go to the King William Association, a nonprofit organization working to preserve and protect the oldest residential historic district in Texas, as well as promote the unique cultural heritage of San Antonio. So come on out, grab some food, an ice cold drink, and relax under the shaded streets of King William. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. As we've been showing you, the spirit of Fiesta is blanketing downtown, including the Riverwalk. Artistic displays of clothes, candles, jewelry, and other accessories, all handmade. The displays are part of the Fiesta Artisan Show. More than 40 different artisans have set up along the Riverwalk. Visitors encouraged to browse the tables and tents to find unique and eclectic handmade items. Take a look at these. This artisan with timeless treasures turns antique silverware into heirloom pieces of jewelry. She says the Fiesta Artisan Show lets San Antonio do two things at one time. Handcrafted things is kind of a 
lost art a little bit and um, everybody is a small business that's down here and so it's just great to support both of those things. Good stuff. The Fiesta Artisan Show closes tonight at 11 p.m., but opens back up tomorrow at 11 a.m., wrapping up at 8 in the evening. And the good news is if you're stepping out this evening for any Fiesta activities, it's going to be really nice outside. Temperatures right now about 5 to 10 degrees cooler than where we were this time yesterday. Still a little warm out in the full sunshine in the 70s, but especially after the sun goes down, yes, those temperatures are falling through the 60s with winds calming. We'll get you a full look at that forecast coming up in just a few. We were just talking about one of the storms years ago that that hail kind of pummeled the case that parking lot. We didn't have that yesterday, but we did have a lot of rain. Yes, we found some rain. We had a little bit of small hail here in downtown San Antonio and really some gusty winds too. But yes, we had that storm system that quickly moved in and out yesterday evening along that front, and it did drop some decent rainfall totals for moving so quickly. Let's take a look at some of those briefly. About three quarters of an inch over at the airport, just over half of an inch in in Pearsall, about half of an inch in Hallettsville out east, and just under two inches over in Pipe Creek. That's actually where some of the larger hail was found with that storm system that moved through. You can see what's left of that continues to scoot eastward across portions of the deep south here this Saturday evening. Behind it, drier air in place here in south central Texas, and nothing but sunshine. You can see just that as we take a look outside with live cam. Seven 76 degrees this hour, a dew point of 37. So yes, that lower humidity is in place and it still is a little gusty. Still seeing some winds gust upwards of about 25 to 30 miles per hour in spots. Those winds will continue to die down though as we head into the evening hours and especially after sunset. Those temperatures are going to turn cool. Falling through the 60s is what we're expecting throughout Flambeau time. Now those temperatures will continue to fall a chilly storm Start is in store first thing tomorrow morning. Low 50s here in town. It will be a warmer end. Plenty of sunshine. Highs topping off in the upper 80s, even near 90 in some spots. Into early next week, the humidity will start to return. And then by the middle to later portions of next week, that's when we'll monitor for a couple of isolated storm chances to return to the forecast. But first, here's a look at your Sunday. Again, it is going to be a cooler than average start near about 52 by 7 a.m. in San Antonio. Plenty of sunshine and blue skies throughout the day. Also less wind than what we've seen today. But I th do think tomorrow evening we could see some wind gusts upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But yes, temperatures will continue to warm around 78 by 11 a.m. And then into the afternoon, those daytime highs, upper 80s, close to about 90 degrees. We're talking about the moisture as well. This evening, fantastic with that drier air in the works. Same as expected into your Sunday and into Monday as well, but especially by Tuesday morning, you can see those southeasterly winds return. This green color is more of that, that Gulf moisture that's going to work back in to the area as well. So some areas of patchy fog will be possible by Tuesday and into Wednesday. High pressure sets up off to our south, but some disturbances riding around the western edge of that high pressure system will allow those isolated storm chances to return turn as early as Wednesday, so we'll keep eyes on that. Temperature still in the 80s, but yes, until then, enjoy this evening. Absolutely beautiful. Tomorrow's going to be pretty nice too, guys. Wow, and the 52 to 90, that's a big spread. It's that drier yep. air. Yep, we'll look forward to it though. Thank you, man. Spring's going to spring. Oh yeah. After the break, behind the scenes of Fiesta's le what is that? latest event. Latest event. You got it. Oh, it's spelled wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you where you can see Praise Dance coming up. Well, time is quickly ticking down to the start of the Flambeau Parade. If you are anywhere near downtown, you can feel the energy and anticipation. I can even feel it right here. I know. We're well, close. We are downtown. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it counts. But let's head back out there. Steve and Stephanie, we're going to check in with you. I'd say is the crowd picking up, but it was already crowded when we got out, when we went to you next. It's more crowded now, though. I've got to tell you that, Courtney and Tim. And it is so much fun. We have a DJ out here. We have food. We have drink, a flower wall. But I want to introduce you right now, Billy, don't go too far, because I want to introduce you to, I'm calling them our KSAT Insider Instigators, okay? 
It's the Saldana family, and Cynthia Saldana right here is the chief instigator. Cynthia, how many tickets did you buy for our Insider event? I bought 17 tickets for my family. It's the Saldana Gonzalez Reyes family, and they're all over, and we bought 17 of them for today's uh, event. Okay, awesome, and now I want to speak to your beautiful granddaughters here. So how did you get ready? What's your favorite thing about Fiesta? Uh, the yeah, the feet. The, 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 the yeah. floats, the floats. Um, I like how it's very festive and colorful. Yeah. And party. Festive and colorful. Oh, yeah. Can you show us your nails? <laughs> she got her nails done specifically for Fiesta. And that just goes to show you, look, there's so much excitement around this event. People are super happy to be here. They want to party and they want to see the rest of San Antonio because let's not forget, this is what San Antonio is all about. It is what San Antonio is all about. And so we're right along Avenue E here in a uh, parking lot that we've used just for this KSAT Insider event. Do we see these babies? Look at these babies. Oh, we're a little shy. Oh, this is a this is a shy one. This is their first fiesta? This is her first fiesta. Her first parade. <laughs> so cute, so cute. All right, hi Josie. All right, here for being for being such good sports, I'm giving you guys some KSAT medals. You got one, okay? Here you go, sweetie. Here you go, another one. By the way, come here, come here, darling. So earlier in the show, I think John Paul got when she started her face painting, and this is the finished product right here. Love it. Spider-Man. So more than happy to show it off. And you know, we've got so much coming up in just a bit. When we start our broadcast, Steve, he's just walking away. He's just oh, no, working I'm, I'm the room. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go and, and meet all these other people who are super excited to be here. They're just having a good time, just mingling with each other, and we're just getting ready. And this is all about dedication. When you look at how decked out everybody here is, so colorful and it's just such a really really nice event here for san antonio we're so excited to be a part of it and we can't forget viva fiesta we're going to see you when our broadcast starts tonight at seven o'clock right steve yeah it's our special starts at seven o'clock and we will see you there all right we're on three we're going to say viva fiesta okay, okay. one two three viva, viva fiesta, fiesta! <laughs> tim and courtney back to you in the studio now I'm thinking, what kind of face paint I got to get before I we do know. the 10 o'clock show tonight? If we, if, if we have face paint on the 10, it's not our Don't fault. Don't ask questions. Mind your business. <laughs> the Fiesta Commission is welcoming a new event this year that is celebrating praise through dance. The Alpha Tau Omega chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority is presenting praise dance at the Carver Cultural Center tomorrow. Yes, KSAP producer Priscilla Caraman shows us the artistry and beauty of the performers that fall right in line with what Fiesta is known for. We've shown you the piñatas, we've talked about STEM, and we've even gone outdoors. But now we're going inside the Carver Cultural Community Center into a world of dance. This is our 20th year of praise dance. Think of it as the cherry on top of a 10-day citywide celebration and a chance to see a different side of Fiesta. We are one of less than 10 events that are, are African-American sponsored at the Fiesta. Which is why Sharon Gardner Swisher, chairman of Praise Dance 2023, tells us getting the word out is so important. So bringing a diversity within the community, letting other diverse groups and ethnic groups understand they too can belong to this rich history of San Antonio. Praise dancing is part of the arts. Art is it's not just painting and drawing, but it's expressions which are your body, you know, physical expression. Praise Dance started as just an idea in 2002. This is the brainchild of one of our former presidents, the late Sandra Sappinter. It was her idea that we put together a program with the liturgical dancers, with uh, members from all religious backgrounds and denominations. Dr. Sharon Crockett Ray, president of the Alpha Tau Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority says, the official Fiesta event draws in dancers from all across Bear County. From the various churches and civic organizations that have dance organizations, dance that represent ballet, African, modern, jazz. And your support helps their sorority give back. We promote literacy, education, provide scholarship opportunities. 
and a space to showcase creativity in the heart of the East Side. It's also an event dancers return to time and time again. Some of the dancers that we will feature on the 20th anniversary, they started out with us 20 years ago. It is so exciting to see those groups come back to us and to be able to showcase their talent even 20 years later. And it adds to the flavor of the festivities. Something different and unique. Viva Fiesta! Well, if you are heading downtown to catch the 75th annual Fiesta Flambeau Parade, you will not be alone. Streets in, in and around downtown are blocked off and count on traffic going into downtown this evening. Thousands are expected to watch in person, but you have another option to watch the parade here at 7 o'clock. That's right. We'll have it all on here. So we'll have well, and we'll be able, and we'll be down to mingle too. But there's Texas Eats, I'm told. Before yes, that. Texas Eats is before that. So beginning at seven, though, you can definitely keep tuning in and don't change your uh, don't change dancing. your We've channel. We've lost our place here. And we're <laughs> just trying to let you know that it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, we've got Texas Eats, and then we have seven o'clock the Flambeau, and we'll in between our show because the night bee won't be on till eleven tonight. That's right. We're going to be on much gonna... later tonight because the yep. parade will go to eleven o'clock and all the festivities. So here is a preview of tonight's Texas Eats. So while we have those toasting, we'll go ahead and get the beer cheese on the burgers. And while our cheese is getting warm, we'll go ahead and throw our caramelized onions down on the flat top. So these go for anywhere from four to six hours. Onions right on top. You're a brave man. So uh, the only thing we put on the burger besides the toppings on the flat top is our Dijonese. Oh my goodness. That looks awesome. Yeah. 